guess where we're heading? We're heading down to the Sheriff's Department today. For those of you that watched the video that I put up saying that my daughter was unlawfully detained by a Sheriff's Deputy, uh, this is kind of the follow-up. So I will say, you know, I'm going to give you the full skinny on this, whether it's good or bad, whether it supports, you know, my ideology or not, whatever. I'm going to just tell you the way it's going down. So just to update you in case you missed the video, my daughter was pulled over last week uh, coming home from work, and she was told by the deputy that she's not in any trouble. He's with the DUI task force, uh, just checking to make sure everyone's safe and, and driving. Um, somebody just flashed me. See that? I did a video on that a long time ago about drivers flashing other drivers. Yep, there goes a police officer. Don't want to get pulled over on my way to the sheriff's department. Um... So anyway, she was pulled over. The deputy was super courteous, super nice. Uh, she was scared to death, as you could understand, her first time being pulled over. Heck, anytime I get pulled over, I get nervous, and it's been a long time. But, but he said he was with the DUI task force, and he was just checking to make sure everyone was safe. He then wrote her a warning ticket for crossing the center line. And on that warning ticket, he said she had several violations. Now, I asked my daughter, was she crossing the lines was she speeding she said no and then the next day she was like you know I go over it again and again in my head I don't think I was crossing any lines I guess it's possible which I'm sure it's possible but it just smelled fishy to me that he didn't mention speed he didn't mention her crossing the lines but he went out of his way to mention on two occasions that he was just checking to make sure everyone was driving safe and not drinking and driving so it sounded to me like it was a fishing expedition and he was just trying to, you know, pull people over with no real probable cause or reasonable articulable suspicion. How about that for a couple of words thrown together? I will say that I emailed the sheriff the very following day and I read that on the air in case you guys are interested in going back and looking at it. He responded to me the same day, the sheriff did. He got in touch with a captain of the operations division who oversees this particular deputy. They reviewed the dash cam videotape. They cannot give me a copy of that because of a law that was signed last year by then Governor Pat McCrory. And that stemmed from, I think, the shooting of an unarmed black man that the police were, you know, the guy, the, the cop that was um, looked at for shooting this guy was let off. And that's, I think, the thing that sparked all these riots off last year or earlier this year time kind of melds together. In any event, I can't get that video without a court order. The captain was diligent about getting in touch with me via phone. We played phone tag for roughly four days, I think, and he probably called me eight times in that period. He sent me a couple of emails. I tried calling him back. We just weren't connecting. We finally did on his cell phone at like 6.30 at night. He was on his way home from the office and he called me. So kudos to the sheriff and to the captain for, you know, treating my email, my requests, my concerns with what appears to be some sense of urgency, which I think is awesome. Sorry about the video going light and dark, guys. The, the lighting is not very good out, and this camera is very light sensitive, it seems. The captain did say to me, although I can't release a copy of the video without a court order, you're welcome to come down to the office and view it. And I said, okay. He did say to me that the deputy was very courteous during the stop and I said yep my daughter said as much said he was very courteous and he also said that she was speeding 50 it was either 53 or 58 in a 35 and I was like oh hold on a second that freaked me out and I said okay um, I want to see I want to see that because I want to have that as, a, as a, teaching, a teachable moment with my daughter that's not cool at all it, but again, I find it strange that the deputy, when he pulled her over, never once mentioned speed. When I talked to my daughter about it, she said, Dad, he did pull me over right after it changed from uh, 55 to 35. So maybe, maybe he got her in the 55 zone and then pulled her over in the 35 zone. I don't know. Maybe she was speeding in the 35 and was on her way to slowing down. I don't know. Hopefully the dash cam video will illuminate that a little bit for me. If nothing else, so I can have a conversation with my daughter, my, my new driver daughter, who just got her license this year. It seems as though everyone's trying to be transparent, and that's a good thing. That's what we want with our government, 
our law enforcement officials. We want transparency. But he did admit that the dash cam was not on when the officer initially, supposedly, witnessed my daughter crossing the center line. Is that true or not? I don't know. Is it true or not that he witnessed her crossing the center line? I don't know, and we'll never know. It's his word. And certainly my daughter could have been mistaken. I mean, I cross the center line all the time, especially going around curbs and corners. And apparently he was stopped right there at a curb where we changed from 55 to 35. So stuff happens. Um, my point in doing this is not to try to make a federal case or a mountain out of a molehill, but it's to hold law enforcement accountable to we the people. Remember guys, we're supposed to be the masters. They're supposed to be the servants. And if we don't question, if we don't assert our rights, if we don't step up and push back, they got carte blanche. So if nothing else, if it turns out this deputy is a saint and my daughter was in the wrong, they know that, you know, somebody here in the public's watching and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And maybe if this deputy has two or three or four or five different people call in under certain, or under similar circumstances, it's, you see a pattern starting to develop and that's not a bad thing to have in somebody's file if they're breaking the law. Conversely, if it turns out, you know, he is a saint, then I'm going to send a letter in to his captain and the sheriff saying that I think he did a great job. We'll see how that works out, but I'm not opposed to saying, hey, good job. In fact, I hope that's the case. I want to feel as though our government, our law enforcement is doing the right thing. I really, really do. I don't want there to be like I see all these videos all over YouTube of corrupt officials, especially when those officials, public servants, carry a, a badge and a gun and the weight of the law and the court system behind them. So I can't film inside the sheriff's department where I'm going because I'm going beyond the public portion back into the offices and be viewing the set of computer. So I'll talk to you when I get out and let you know what my findings are. Okay guys, so I just left the sheriff's department. I met with the captain. I viewed the video in its totality. And um, here are my thoughts. And you can definitely make an argument for no victim, no crime. And there was no victim in this case. But based on the video that I did see, she did. I mean, we're not talking cross the center line. We're talking touch the center line maybe four or five times during a, you know, three mile. He was behind her for about three miles. She was speeding through the 55 to a 35. He could have absolutely written her a ticket for either of those two offenses or both. He didn't. The demeanor of the deputy when he spoke with my daughter was professional, courteous. Uh, he was a gentleman. Again, you can make arguments depending on what side of the fence that you're on for no victim, no crime, uh, for, you know, they didn't have a right to pull her over anyway. But I'm not going there with this video. The reason for me following through to the level that I did was to let them know that there's people in the public that want to keep them accountable and make sure that everything's transparent. And I said that to them, looked them dead in the eye and said, listen, I'm not trying to make a federal case out of this. And I appreciate your professionalism. I appreciate the fact that you've treated my concern with respect. And you answered me in a timely manner and you made every attempt to resolve my questions. And he said, no, sir, I, I, uh, I completely understand. He has a 16 year old daughter. That's a driver as well. And so what am I going to do? What am I taking away from this experience? And my daughter couldn't join me because she is working. And again, I'm going into surgery on Monday. So this was really the last chance for probably a week or longer before I'd be able to get down here. And I just wanted to put it to bed and get it over with. So that's the reason why I'm here and she's not. But I am going to go home um, and next time I see her, which will probably be later this evening, I'm going to have a little chat with her. And there's probably going to be a situation where um, her uh, driving privilege, because even though she has a right to travel, for her to travel in my car is a privilege. And I'm going to revoke that privilege for a period of time. Again, this wasn't the end of the world, but she needs to know that every time you get behind the wheel, 
She's taking on a huge responsibility, one with life and death consequences for not just herself, but for other people out on the road. And uh, hopefully it serves as a wake-up call for her. Hopefully it keeps the sheriff's department um, on the right track where they're dealing with the people that they serve, i.e. the public, i.e. the people, in a professional manner, and they maintain some level of constitutionality. And I got to say, in this case, on the broad strokes, they did a great job, and I'm happy about that. He told me that the officer that pulled her over, the deputy, has been serving for 23 years. The guy was super professional. The captain's been on uh, the force. He's been through two different sheriffs. He's been here 25 years, and he said this sheriff does not put up with any baloney. This sheriff uh, will get rid of you in a heartbeat if you're in the wrong. And they get a lot of these requests from the media, but not so much from the public. They do get some from the public. But the new law, signed into law last year by Governor Pat McCrory, as I might have said earlier, uh, does not allow you to get a copy of the video unless you have a court order and you have to be in the video or legal guardian of a minor. And um, But I was able to view it here at the Sheriff's Department because I am the legal guardian of my minor daughter. So that's it, guys. Um, I would say, all in all, I'm glad we went through it. I asked him, I said, why didn't he give her a ticket? And I said, I'm not upset that he didn't, but why didn't he? And this is a cool story that he shared. He said, you know, we always tell our deputies to um, use their discretion. So they have discretion over whether or not they're going to write you a ticket. And he told me a story about a time that he was training a deputy and he, they, they pulled over a car because the tag was expired. And he got her license and he came back and immediately started scratching off a ticket. And he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm writing her for expired tag. He said, well, what's her story? He said, I don't know. He said, well, go back and talk to her. And he talked to the lady and her husband just died. And the lady was driving a truck that's been stored in the barn for three years. She didn't even think about the tag and that sort of thing. So, so they let her off with a warning and said, just get it taken care of. He said, we always try to do the greater good. And I think that's good. So... All in all, I got to say good job to the sheriff's department. I got to say not so great job in my daughter's department from the fact that she was speeding. And, and the weaving thing, I mean, at night, you're going to touch the center line. I don't care who you are going through country roads. Um, but on both of their parts, my daughter and the deputy, they were both super polite to one, one another. The deputy was professional. And um, it looked like he did the right thing in this case. So thanks, deputy. Thanks, sheriff's department and daughter. I'm going to come home and deal with you later. One other thing that was discussed with the captain was when I asked him why he didn't mention anything about speeding when he pulled her over, because she was indeed speeding. He said, it's not uncommon, and this changed since I went through the academy, but nowadays they teach you not to mention why you were pulled over. And he kind of tiptoed around this part but he got to it. He said, they're trained not to mention why you got pulled over because many times the people that got pulled over will mention completely different reasons and admit to breaking other laws or other crimes, so to speak, when given the opportunity to speak first. And I looked at him and I smiled and I said, no offense, but that's exactly why I instruct everybody not to speak to the police and not to answer questions. See, they want you to incriminate yourself because they'll load you up with other charges if given the opportunity in many cases. So, again, in this particular instance, this deputy, I think, did the right thing all the way around. He could have been way worse and given her tickets, and he didn't. I think that was a good thing. But that doesn't mean every deputy or every officer acts in that manner. And that's why accountability and transparency is important. They need to know that we're watching them. That's important, guys. So I don't feel bad about going through the exercise that I went through. It was a bit of a uh, time waster in some respects. I wasted the gas driving to and from. The captain had to waste the time and the sheriff had to waste the time answering my emails and taking the time out to go through and show me the video. But again, I think it's a good exercise. They know that people are holding them accountable. And 
it's important that we know that they're following the law. Feel free to leave your comments. I think it's a good thing that we dialogue and interact on these sorts of issues. All right, guys, we're going to finish it here. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.